Now we are in Delhi, India's capital. At the moment we are here near the parliament that the English built and the Indians took over when it became a republic in 1947. Our trip begins in Delhi. Delhi has approximately 12 million residents and is India's second largest city. Our trip, which begins here, will take us out into the country to the holy city of Varanasi on the Ganges and then further to Badui where the carpets are made. It is this process that we'll be taking a look at. Before that, however, we will visit Mr. Kapoor, who is a master of carpets. Stay with us. Mr. Kapoor owns a company that manufactures carpets in Badri. He's a third generation carpet producer and lives in Delhi. He will explain a bit about the area we're going to. So there's a long tradition of uh, carpet production in Badri. Yeah, all the things, starting from the wool and uh, up to finishing. Five, six processing is uh, from starting to finishing. There are around 250,000 people involved, Badoi and surrounding. Around 20 kilometers Badoi, uh, surrounding Badoi, all they are uh, involved in uh, carpet weaving. So you mean that, that there's a, almost a quarter of a million people that are involved in the carpet industry yeah. in Badoi? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of people. And they're, they're supported by this? Yeah. Wow, that sounds like a really, really interesting region. Uh, and I can't really <laughs> wait to get there. We're going there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I must, of course, take the chance to check out Delhi before I travel onward. One coffee? Yep. Is that with milk? Sugar without sugar? No sugar. All right. Shall we have a taste then? Mm, brilliant. After a good cup of coffee on Delhi streets, it feels like it might be time to head to slighter, calmer areas. So I think we should try to go to the bar. Now we arrived here at Varanasi, and it took about an hour to fly from Delhi. And from here, we will continue our trip to Badui by car. Now, this is what most of us associate with Varanasi. The Ganges is the holiest river of Hinduism. Varanasi is said to be nearly 5,000 years old and is the holiest city for the Hindu. It is said that if you bathe in the Ganges, you cleanse your soul. But now, we should depart onwards to Badui, where the carpets are made. To go from Varanasi to Badui, India's center for carpet manufacturing, takes over an hour by car, all those a mere 30 kilometers away. Most of the wool that is used is imported, so the first step in Badui is the dye. It's the local wool, it's the not so good quality. Yeah, because the New Zealand wool is a bit more fatty, right? It has more... More shiny, more, shiny. more luster, yeah. and you build with softness, you know. Twelve and a half kilos. Yeah. Here we have a slightly smaller pot for smaller quantities. It holds twelve and a half kilos. Steam comes up from the large steamer used in order to heat up all of these. It must be constantly stirred by hand in order to achieve consistent color throughout. Now we're up on the rooftop of the dyeing shop. Here the dyed yarn is drying in the sun. The sun is very important for the drying, as it gives a special luster and particular nuance to the color. This is the initial drying. The second drying comes later, after the carpet has been cut and washed. This is also done in the sun, so that the cut pile will also receive its special luster and color.
Meanwhile, in another part of Badawi, pattern designers are working on transferring the designs from pictures to a large model sheet. Here all the knots are drawn up in the carpet, so the weavers know exactly what colour each knot shall have. In India they work with traditional Indian designs, copies of antique Persian designs and special ordered modern designs from the West. Here we'll come to the very core of the process of manufacturing a carpet, at a weaver's. The carpet weaver has received the chart that we saw earlier was made. The warp that we see here is the basis for the carpet itself. The weaver takes an iron rod and places it in front of the warp. He then takes the yarn and weaves it around the warp and around the iron rod. After this, he knocks down the rod in order to press down the knots together. The harder he knocks the bar down, the tighter the carpet becomes. After this, he cuts along the rod in order to achieve the pile of the carpet. A carpet like this has about 1,000 knots per square meter, and a carpet like this is approximately four or five square meters. One square meter would take an experienced weaver about seven working days to weave. So a carpet such as this would take at least six weeks to complete. It actually didn't look very difficult to weave. So I accepted the challenge of trying it myself. Um, no, I'm messing this up. I'll catch you there. Okay, okay, okay. Now pull. Now pull. Ah! Complete one. Whoa, oh, I did one not. <laughs> no, this is really not easy at all. One realizes immediately that experience and craft are required to do this. It took me about a minute to do one knot. At that speed, it would take me approximately seven months to be one square meter. If the carpet is a large one, it is typical for two persons to work on the same carpet. One is truly amazed on how much work that goes into a finished carpet. Wherever you go here in Badui, you have a group of curious children trailing after you. The next step is the polishing, in which the carpet's pile is trimmed evenly. This is done a stone's throw from where the carpets are woven. Before the polishing, the pattern is blurred and the surface is uneven because the threads in the carpet's pile vary in length. When the carpet is polished, the surface becomes even, the colors become clear and the pattern sharp. Earlier the polishing was done with a pair of scissors and comb. Now a machine is used because it goes faster and the risk for mistakes is reduced. One mistake in the polishing can destroy many hours of work. First what they do from the back side of the carpet. Mm -hmm. I will come to the carpet's laundry. Here all the residual wool is burned off of the carpet's back side. Then the carpets are washed and rinsed several times in order to get out the remaining wool and dust. After that, the carpets are bleached in order to set the colors. For the modern design carpets, the washing process is now finished. For the carpets with antique designs, however, the process continues after the initial washing. Afterwards, a solution of mixed herbs that comes from the mountains and forests is spread around the surface and the carpet is rolled up. It is left like this overnight. This is so that the herbs can enhance the color. Then the carpet is rolled out again the following day. It is thoroughly washed, dried, and then washed again. After that, the carpet is dried. This entire process takes nearly two days. An antique look is given to the carpet with this tool, and it's also done at a laundry. This is also the softening for the carpets. Carpets that are really tightly woven need to be softened like this in various places. A comb is used for this treatment. The carpets are dried in the sun here. 
It is done immediately after the carpets have undergone the two-day cleaning. This takes an additional day, so this is the second time the yarn is sun-dried and then it obtains an even deeper and clearer colour. This is the final step in the process of manufacturing a carpet. One could refer to it as the finishing or the fine-tuning. All unevenness is trimmed from the carpet. If there's any uneven threads sticking up here and there, or, or if the warp thread sometimes can appear on the back in white, they are then pressed back and in. The edges are trimmed properly, and in certain cases, a relief is even cut. After that, the carpet is ready for further sales and export. Well, this carpet here would go rather well in my bedroom. Now I understand how much time and skill craftsmanship is required to produce a carpet. I hope that you thought it was as exciting as I did. And now I will take my carpet and begin the long trip home to Sweden.